video just a little bit different. This is a huge chunk of uh, California Buckeye Burl. It was given to me, which is a heck of a gift because it was 10 inches across by like four, four and a half inches tall. But when I poured it, I had a hot glue down in about four different places. I opened it up like that Christmas present you get from your great, great aunt. That's uh, socks. This much epoxy in the bottom when it floated up. Luckily, I was able to cut that off and I'll probably be able to use this for a platter of some sort. But I think I got a total of, I weighed it out to around six and a half, six and three quarter pounds of clear slow in this piece of resin. And before I cut that piece off, it was like, shoot, it was like 12 and a half pounds, which is heavy. Even just this piece right here is still significantly heavy. So I'm gonna take it nice and easy. Don't wanna break it. So we'll get at it. And in all my, all my other videos, you'll see my carbides, they're all essentially homemade except for like three of them, which I made the handles for them. And here we go with the slow motion cliche ribbon slinging. Yay. This piece, it was been from my first one to make it this fancy, severely nerve wracking. A bunch of don't screw up, don't screw up, don't screw up, don't screw up constantly with everything that I did but it was fun I enjoyed it um, all the pieces that I do that are really high gloss dyed or whatnot um, they'll test you I mean anything can go wrong at any given time with those things And when I said that I wasn't, this video is going to be a little bit different, I had to cut out a whole bunch of stuff because I had like two and three quarter hours with the reel. It took a while to make this thing. Just all down to the little knickknack stuff. And right here I'm making the, the feet for the cap and the lid, um, little black pieces. This is some red elm that I had just laying around. I figured why not. I've got to dye it black. You're going to move to the grain really anyway, so I figured it'd be usable. And by the way, I'm never drinking in the shop or drinking while I'm doing editing. That was not beer. So what I'm doing here is drilling out with a drill bit. Duh. Um, the reason why I'm doing that is a, I got to looking at a way that I could make tenons on the separate pieces that would fit perfectly down inside of the other piece. Give it a more structural sound. Sound. Dead gummit. More structural soundness, I guess you could say. Um, instead of just sitting flat on there being a glue up, these have pieces that sit down inside of each other, so you've got a flat surface and a 
recessed surface also that's glued together um, just in case somebody wants to drop it plus it gives you an itty bitty tenon that will fit inside of your pin jaws um, like I said this is well that piece was pretty spot but just red elm And here you'll see the, this is a wood plug cutter. Um, the kit that I got has got a 13 millimeter and 16 millimeters, so I got the corresponding drill bit that way the wood plug fits perfectly inside. So you got a 13 millimeter wood plug, you got a 13 millimeter drill bit. And I'm just test fitting to make sure everything fits up just fine. And I'll, once I finally get everything cut down, I'll concave it that way it sits just right on there not too much not too little now I was trying to figure out what I was doing right here showing you it's a stink bug so in the south we've got bad stink bugs this time of year I sent him to the dust collector May he die miserably. Those things, God. If you've ever had to deal with them coming in your shop, you would know. You crush them, it stinks up your shop. You leave them alone, more just come in. Here I'm boring out the hole for the wood plug that will be made into the, there you go, ta-da, um, just boring it out, like I said, that, if you plan on doing something that's glued up and you're kind of worried about getting it centered, that kit right there, it doesn't come with the appropriate drill bits, but the wood plug cutters perfect for it. And here I'm going from sanding to, well final sanding to Danish wool because well as you can see right here when I pull it off that it collects the dust. So that's, I don't wipe it down with Danish, not Danish, I don't wipe it down with denatured alcohol to clean it off, I just wipe it down with Danish. Danish oil 
it gets the dust off anyway. And here again, this is the wood plug cutter. I uh, believe I'm working on the foot now. This is also manzanita burl. The manzanita burl I got from a friend of mine out in California, Amy over at Phoebe's Forests. The way she's got it spelled, it looks like Phoebe's. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> but nah, we traded some wood. She actually won one of my platter giveaways on Instagram, and I got to chit-chatting with her, and she had some pretty cool stuff that she gets more sources from out there. So we did a little horse trading, and she sent me some manzanita burl. And for the life of me, I can't remember why this doesn't fit. I think I might have had a 13 millimeter hole with a 16 millimeter plug. I ended up going back and recutting it. Um, but it all fit together. I mean, wood turning, it's 95% of covering up your mistakes, right? <laughs> And you'll see in some other videos, I'll use this little carbide. I love this little thing. That thing eats some serious wood to be as small as it is. And it can get in some small spaces. This is a piece of um, it's a block that I got from King Queen Woodwork on Instagram. He does a lot of knife scales and stuff. But it's a piece of black ash. Um, it was stabilized with black dye and then cast with red epoxy and carbon fiber. I had originally intended on it being the foot and the top, but Instagram. Um, I turned it too small and dropped it and it went breaky breaky so it no makey makey so that's why I had to make the foot out of manzanita burl which I kind of like the manzanita burl foot and the manzanita burl cap it's just a shame I couldn't have been able to see how it would have looked with the black ash foot and top If you ever turn carbon fiber or stabilized wood, you'll know that it's real dusty. The carbon fiber in this just made it extremely dusty. Um, wasn't too, too bad. Wasn't hard at all. But in the end, it came out beautiful. Now I'm just test fitting to see how it sits on top of the manzanita burl. That way, it'll be nice and flush and just to 
real good fit when it's all done. And I'm just trying to remove all the, or the majority of the wood before I take the tailstock off. You don't want to be messing with it too, too much whenever that tailstock's off because it can get out of control and break on you real quick if you're not careful. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. This has been my first real high-end piece. Um, again, a big thank you to Mr. Matthew Hatala who gave me the piece of Buckeye Burl. Uh, it's another local that lives around me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the chance of that Burl. If you haven't seen his stuff, M. Hatala Woodturner, check him out on Instagram. You will not regret it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, share, whatever you want to do. See ya.